Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. This is a year of Christmas, my year-long Christmas series. I am running a little behind. This is actually the February video. I know March is almost over, but my February and March videos are going to be really close together. Today I am going to be sharing some cards that I have had done for a little while and I've been super, or at least the tester has been done for a while and I have been so excited to share with you. So I am gonna be mass producing Christmas cards and I'm using one of my all time favorite background stamps from Simon Says Stamp, this is the Wood Planks and we are using Misty Coast ink on Lawn Fawn Fall Gray cardstock for a weathered, kind of like a weathered whitish gray background. I almost want this to look like siding or a front door or something to that effect. And we are using my favorite stencil set from Christmas 2021 season from Pink Fresh Studio called the Thrill of Hope Wreath. I loved, loved, loved this stencil set. It's a five piece stencil set when it was released. And I used it for a card and all along I knew I wanted to mass produce cards. So I'm actually making 10 cards today. Right now I am doing all of the backgrounds at one time. Then I will be stenciling all of the backgrounds and then I highly recommend allowing your backgrounds to maybe air dry a little bit. These are all dye inks, but still with that, I am gonna stamp and emboss the sentiment on my card and so because of that I really want to make sure the background is completely dry. I actually let everything sit and dry for an hour while I went to lunch or had lunch. I didn't go anywhere and then when I came back to my studio I finished the cards. Now you can see from the sample there on my table that it just creates the most beautiful beautiful background. This wood planks background is fantastic for all kinds of techniques. I'm definitely doing like the easy technique here today. I did stamp each of the backgrounds twice to make sure that it um, really had good definition. The great thing about the Pink Fresh Studio stencils, as you can see, there are little marks in the corners which make it easy to line up. I am going to be using all Simon Says Stamp inks going forward. I used Pink Fresh Studio Misty Coast for the wood planks, which gives us that beautiful soft background, and then we're going to stencil right on top. And I am starting with some Aspen Simon Says Stamp ink. I am going to do all 10 cards at one time. With this video I, and this project, I really wanted to show how you can mass produce cards that are beautiful to send out. This is a design where if you had 50 to make, it wouldn't be a chore. It would take a little bit of work but you can see how quickly I was able to do 10 cards. Now minus some die cutting and assembly of a couple of little things that I did off camera, the total amount of time to put together my cards, um, at least to put together the majority of it, was a little under an hour. Now things like attaching the pearl gemstones, which you would not have to do, and I probably wouldn't if I was mass producing a bigger quantity than this, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, other than that and assembling the bow, everything else I did on camera. So I would say these. this is a very doable project for those who want to make all of one style of card to send out. Stencil number two, I'm actually kind of going away from the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Trio. We are going to use all three of those new green colors, but I'm going to move over and do Field Ink, which is a little bit brighter green for this part of the wreath. I think one of the things I like about this stencil set so much is that it is not an overpowering Christmas type of wreath. 
The greenery is beautiful and it takes center stage. Because there are four different greenery stencils in this and only one for the red little branches or berries. In fact, you could probably do the little branch in brown if you wanted to and then add red berries, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful wreath. I absolutely love it. And you will see that um, I'm simply using the small size Simon Says Stamp Blending Brush with my ink and I will do all of one step before moving on to the next. This makes it really easy to break it down. Stencil number three is the red berries. For this, I'm gonna use the brand new Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in Cherry. This is the perfect red color. If you were wanting a really beautiful red from Simon Says Stamp, this is it. This cherry is a cherry red and I love it. And you can see how well it works for Christmas. We'll go ahead and do all of these before moving on to stencil number four. Now stencil number four is going to be the shading for some of the leaves in stencil number one. For this, remember stencil number one, we use the Aspen ink. So now I'm going to use Sage, which is like the mid-tone color in that trio of inks. And it's gonna add a little bit darker, deeper edge to some of those leaves from stencil one. As these inks absorb and dry into the cardstock, you will end up with a little bit more muted design that is just absolutely perfect. And because we used a nice light ink for our background, it doesn't take away or overpower our stencil design and instead just enhances it. Simple elegance was what I was going for here. The final stencil is kind of what I call like the little, almost maybe like a little pine maybe in the design. And you would think kind of at this point with stencil four, it's looking really good. For whatever reason, that stencil number five just finishes it off perfectly. I cannot wait. And we will be using the brand new pine ink from Simon Says Stamp. And this is the darkest color in that Aspen Sage Pine color trio. It's nice, deep, and dark, and so pretty. Three little areas is all it is. And you can see that once I got here, I was speeding through. When I'm completely done doing all of my inking, I do take my stencils to the sink and I rinse them with a little warm water. Um, if the ink is stubborn, I'll use a little soap. I hardly ever have to, but I usually rinse them off with a little warm water and then I place them in a drying rack. I have added the drying rack in the description. I've had quite a few questions about it. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, it is fantastic because you don't end up with stencils laying all over your counter drying. I'm going to take the Thrill of Hope stamp set from Pink Fresh Studio and we are going to stamp that in the center of each wreath with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with antique gold embossing powder. I am using my favorite new tool from Rabbit Hole Designs. This is the powder tool, anti-cling tool and it is so good. Now ignore my poor Hero Arts embossing ink pad. My pad came loose from the base. I just need to glue it back down or pick up a new one. This is antique gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. It is my absolute favorite. And yes, we are going to assembly line stamp this. Now this is the step in the creation of these cards that I was talking about that you really wanna make sure your background is completely dry. 
before you stamp this. You don't want little gold flecks sticking to everything. My best tip for not having your paper warp or minimal warping is to hit the back of your paper first with your heat tool. Well, first, make sure it's really nice and heated up. Hit the back and then go ahead and bring it to the front and emboss the greeting. I have about two pieces of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock here that I am stamping another phrase from the Thrill of Hope stamp set on using that Pine Simon Says Stamp ink. You'll notice I'm not even trimming this with a paper trimmer, but I'm simply stamping the sentiment five times per four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. You could probably get by with even a little bit less, but this is what worked well for me. I wanna leave enough room to die cut each of these sentiments with my favorite Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies. The pine ink is going to really just tie in so beautifully with our wreath. Once I have 10 of these stamped, we're going to grab our die cutting machine and die cut each of these sentiments. I'm taking the smallest sentiment label die. I'm gonna tape it in place and run it through my die cutting machine. I'm not going to do all of these on camera, but I do wanna show you how I shorten the strip. So once I have lined it up with one side of the sentiment and die cut it, I take it out of my machine, line it up, then on the other end I want to trim and run it back through just till it clicks. And that is going to give you perfectly cut sentiment strips. Now I'm gonna repeat this for all 10 strips. This is not my favorite part of the project at all, but I really do love a sentiment strip on a card, which you guys probably already know. It's just the repetition of having to line it up and run it through over and over but the results are so worth it. If you want to save more time and you maybe don't wanna do the sentiment strips and die cutting, I would recommend either stamping this sentiment or one of the others from the stamp set down below the wreath. For my bow, we are going to be using this awesome Build a Present stamp from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm only going to assemble one here on camera. There is a base piece and then all of the layering pieces. Now I left all of mine the same color. Another, and I am gonna layer them because I really like the look of the layering, but if you want to save time, you could simply die cut the solid bow 10 times and add shading with your Copic marker. I went ahead and cut both 10 times and I'm gonna add shading with my Copic marker, but that just gives it a little bit more interest. I found when looking through my stash for a bow, I wanted one that wasn't dimensional. As much as I love dimensional bows, I didn't want this one to actually be a folded bow. I wanted it to be flat so it went through the mail easier, and I looked for one that was the right size. This one is so pretty. So I'm definitely loving this little bow and we're going to glue these all in place at the bottom of our wreath. Even just like this with the Happy Holidays and no sentiment strip, I think this card is gorgeous. Look at that greenery. And the bow just kind of knocks it out of the park for me. If you need to, you can use some reverse tweezers to help hold that bow in place. I am only placing adhesive in the very center of the bow. Again, assembly line style. I have all of my little bows assembled here, which I did do that off camera. And I have everything sorted in these awesome little triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp. I'm adding a little tab of liquid glue and popping my bows in place. This is some of the Lawn Fawn red textured cardstock that I use to die cut the bow. So it definitely does have a little texture to it, which is really subtle and pretty. Here are all my sentiment strips. We're going to take some Waffle Flower foam adhesive strips. These are the lower profile foam adhesive strips and place these on the back of each of our strips. 
Each one of these little shorter waffle flower foam adhesive strips can be cut, it's basically in half. So one of those strips will fit two of my sentiment strips. I found it worked really well. Then we're going to pop up our little strip here on our card. And I'm just simply going to go ahead and put foam adhesive on the back of all of these. I've also got some pretty pink posh cherry pearls that we're going to use to adorn all of the little berries in our wreath. Now this makes the red pop out a lot more. I do want to say that if you would prefer not to use the pearls because it does take quite a few, I still have probably at least half of a bag of pearls, maybe, maybe a third, maybe a third of a bag of pearls left. After doing 10 cards, I would recommend either glossy accents for your pearls, nouveau crystal drops for your pearl, pearls, not your pearls, for your berries, something to that effect if you want them to be dimensional or you can leave them as is. You could also use red rhinestones for glittery little berries. There are lots and lots of different choices. I just really wanted to have a little bit more dimension and to draw a little bit more red into this and maybe a little bit more emphasis, I guess, on the berries. And so I did go ahead and use them, but I will say that this was the most time consuming step. I am using my, this old embellishment wand that I have had forever. In fact, I was going to throw it away. I'm so glad I didn't. You know, if you've seen some of my recent videos, I have a new embellishment tip for my uh, Studio Katja embellishment wand that I absolutely love. And my, I must have knocked it on the floor and didn't realize it. And my dog tried to eat the rubber tip off of it. I got it out of his mouth, but he ruined it. So I had to order more tips and they are not here yet. I was so mad at him. I cannot believe he did that. Well, yes, I can. He's like a little, a little one. Like he, you know, if you guys have pets, you know, especially dogs, they're like having a small child forever. I'm just glad he didn't eat it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add the rest of these and I will add the rest of my pearls on as well. Oh, first R39 is the marker I'm using and I am just simply going to add a little shading to the center of my bow um, and then kind of feather out from the center and do that on the bow tails as well as the bow itself. And I think that adds just helps make it not look quite so flat. The stenciling has so much shading with the different colors we used. And so I really feel like that little bit of shading on the bow really adds to the overall design. Now that I have all of the sentiment strips and bows on my cards, I'm just going to go through the rest of them and add the shading to all of the bows. I did the one to kind of make sure I liked it, but I definitely want to add that to all of them. And it was super quick and easy. You can see that I'm not using multiple markers. We're just taking one marker and feathering in that color and adding a little bit of shading. I'm doing about like a half moon, like a crescent moon shape on the center, and then a little bit more on where the bow is kind of quote unquote folded over, and then a little bit of feathering coming out from the center and then coming down the bow strings. And again, this is R39. I did link to the specific marker I used in the description. And I have all of my red pearls from Pretty Pink Posh in the Simon Says Stamp Triangle Tray ready to go. I found that I ended up using both or two triangle trays so I could kind of 
dump them from one to another, if that makes sense, to find the size of pearls that I wanted to use. I mostly used like the teeny tiniest and then the next smallest, I guess I want to say, except for maybe about one or two that I used a little bit bigger pearls on. That's just personal preference. And I accidentally bumped my tray and spilled a whole bunch on my table as well. And of course, they always dump upside down. We will attach all of these to white top fold card bases and these cards are all finished. Thank you so much for joining me for this A Year of Christmas mass produced Christmas cards video. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time.